the Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Campbell's, the cigarette that's first in the service. Campbell's stay fresh because they're packed to go around the world. Listen to the music of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the songs of Connie Hayes. Tonight's special guest, star of the 20th Century Fox picture, Tampico, Miss Lynn Barry, and starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Boy, oh boy. What's the matter? Hey, Abbott, come on, come on. Help me get dressed, please. I've got to get to the broadcast right away. Hey, take it easy. There's lots of time. What's the excitement? Excitement? Tonight we're having Lynn Barry as our guest star, and I'm going to make love to her. Boy, oh boy. All right. See, if I'm late, she might walk out of me. So what? Let her walk out. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Yeah, but who wants to park in the dark with a shark? Oh. <laughs> Never mind. Come on. Get your clothes on and let's go. Okay, now, kid. Hey, listen, Abbott. I'm waiting for my new suit. Boy, it's going to be beautiful. It is? The most gorgeous suit you ever saw. Is that right? Yeah, the coat is red with green stripes. It's got pink lapels and orange buttons. Wait a minute. A red coat with green stripes, pink lapels, and orange buttons? Yeah. I suppose you're going to wear yellow pants? What? And have people stare at me? Oh. <laughs> what do you think I am, Abbott? A dope? Uh, yellow pants. Yeah. They clash with my purple shoes. The purple shoes? Surely, I never heard of such a thing. Yellow pants. All right, all right. Drop the pants. I can't. Why not? <laughs> my red underwear won't match my lavender vest. They are. <laughs> now, don't be ridiculous. I wouldn't let you meet Lynn Barry in clothes like that. You'd better wear one of my suits. Hey, here, I'll lend you my uh, dress suit. That old thing, it's full of moth holes. Oh, there isn't a single moth in that suit. You said it. They're all married and got children. Now, nah, wait a minute. <laughs> Just a minute. We don't have any moths in our clothes closet. No moths, eh? No. Just open that closet door and see. Okay, I will. No moths, eh? All right, so there's one. One! That was the mother. Here comes the children. <laughs> that last one was just hatched. That's a brand new baby look, moth. Well, all right, forget about the moths. Here, look. I'll lend you one of my other suits. Now, let's see. There's the uh, worsted, a plaid, a tweed, and that dark one is a twill. A twill? Certainly. Didn't you ever have a twill? Oh, sure. I get a big twill when I ride on the wall of twill. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> Don't be silly. Wait You're a awful twilly. Here's just the suit for you. It belongs to my father. It's his dinner suit. Uh, there's a little breakfast on it, too. No, 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 you dummy. <laughs> this is his soup and fish. It looks like egg to me. Listen, Costello. <laughs> When you lived at home, didn't your family dress for dinner? Why, certainly we dressed. Oh. What do you think we did? Come to the table in our underwear? Look, what's the matter with you? Didn't you ever wear dinner clothes? Yeah, I always wear pajamas. Pajamas are not dinner clothes. They are if you eat in bed. Oh, well. <laughs> that isn't what I mean. You see, as long as I can remember, the men in our family have always worn their tails to dinner. That's a very pretty picture. Yes, it is. <laughs> Where I come from, a man with tails is called a gentleman. Where I come from, we call a monkey. Oh. I mean, after all, that's uh, what they call him. Come in. Oh, it's Ken Niles. Ken Say, Niles. Ken. Costello needs a suit in a hurry. Can he borrow yours? Oh, uh, well, uh, I'll have to go outside and ask a little woman. A little woman? Her neck alone is three feet long. <laughs> Mark Costello, I'll have you know my neck is not long. Oh, no? Last time I saw a neck like that, a jockey was bending over it. <laughs> <laughs> Am I insulting you? Woo! How dare you compare me to a horse? Why, I have an aristocratic face. My grandfather was a count. You're right, Count Fleet. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth, are you going to stand there and let Costello compare me to a horse? Nay, nay. Um, that was a very snappy part. Costello, with your appearance, you're a fine one to talk about Mrs. Niles. Certainly. Just look at yourself, fat boy. I'm not fat. Oh, no? I saw you fall down yesterday and you rocked yourself to sleep trying to get up. <laughs> oh, now, now, look, let's stop this fighting. Uh, look, Mrs. Niles, Costello has to borrow a suit for the broadcast tonight. Uh, yes, dear. Uh, may I lend him mine? Kenneth Niles, before I let you do that, I'd lock you up in the attic. But, gee, dear, you, you just let me out. Oh. Come in. Hello, boys. 
Oh, it's my friend Meyer, the butcher. What's going on, Meyer? Oh, boy, Louie, am I excited. What is happening to me today shouldn't happen to two dogs. One dog couldn't handle it. <laughs> Why, what's the matter? Oh, it's my wife, Sophie. After ten years, it's going to happen. Today is the day, and I got to be by her side. So you got to come over right away, Louie, and take care of my butcher shop, huh? Now, wait a minute, Meyer. I can't do that. We're going to broadcast. I'm going to do a love scene with, li- with Lynn Barry. But, Louie, would you rather do a love scene with Lynn Barry than mine? My butcher shop. Can a duck swim? That's a silly answer. You ask silly questions, you get silly answers. <laughs> Costello, come on. We have to get to the studio. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Think of my wife. Louie, you'll never do anything for me. Meyer, you shouldn't say that. Now, I do. Now, five years ago, I gave you the money to open up the butcher shop. And when you were sick, I paid for the operation. Then when the government was going to put you in jail, I paid your income tax. And six months ago, when your house was on fire, I ran into the burning building and saved your life. And you say I never do anything for you. Yeah, but what have you done for me lately? Freddie Rich plays a Cole Porter favorite, I've Got You Under My Skin. Costello, you had to open your big mouth just because you want to help Meyer. We're stuck here in a butcher shop. Well, come on. We might as well get the orders out. Uh, you dress the chickens. Me dress the chickens? Why should I? They're old enough to dress themselves. No, I'll dress the chickens. You bring me the other fowl. What fowl? That uh, duck. Why should I duck? I'm not ashamed to help Meyer. <laughs> no, I mean duck. Duck in the icebox. Why should I duck in the icebox? You duck in the icebox, oh, you big sissy. Now, here, take it easy. I'm glad to help my friend Meyer. And this wonderful little woman. All right. I know what they're going through. Why, only last week a little stranger came to live at our house. Really? Yes, my sister married a midget. Oh, come on. <laughs> Costello, you're impossible. Hello, Meyer's Butcher Shop. Hello, this is Meyer on the wire. Oh, Meyer, how's the wife? Anything happened yet? No, Louie, it's a very slow process. How's things by the shop? Oh, listen, Meyer. Mrs. Jones sent back the Christmas turkey you sold her. She says it only has one leg. What does she want to do, eat it or dance with it? Oh. Well, did Meyer say when he's coming back? Do you realize that Lynn Barry's probably at the studio now waiting for us? Now, Abbott, this is more important. Let her wait. I got plenty of women waiting for me. 50, 60, 70. 50, 60, 70? Yes, and I wish I could find some a little younger. Oh, come on. <laughs> now, Abbott, women and beautiful women always chase me. See, I don't know why. You think I... <laughs> I don't know. At any minute, a gorgeous girl is apt to walk in that door. Oh, there you are, Costello. Oh, 
Oh. So you want to borrow my Kenneth suit, eh? So you were going to make love to Lynn Berry, eh? And now I find you in a butcher shop, eh? You're going to run out of eight coupons. <laughs> Costello, for your information, Mrs. Niles is one of Meyer's best customers. Yeah, now, yeah. Now, take her order. Huh? Yeah. I said, take her order. Take her I order where? Just... Did you come in with an order? Never mind that. Take what do you want me to take it? Just take it. Listen Somebody is lost. I, uh... I... <laughs> Mr. Costello. Yes, dear? I want 20 cents worth of dog meat. Shall I wrap it up, or do you want to eat it here? <laughs> Now, look what you've done. Oh, I've never been so insulted in all my life. After all these years of trading with my eyes, I have to come in here and be humiliated. It's so okay, 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 okay. Costello, Costello, don't stand there. Apologize. Okay. Come on. Mrs. Niles, if I said anything to offend you, I'm glad of it. Uh, <laughs> Costello, I said apologize. Okay. Mrs. Niles, I'm sorry I suggested that you eat the dog meat here. Is that better? That's much better. Wait until you get home. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, that's all. Cancel my order. Well, you lost Mrs. Niles' order, Costello. You'll have to change your slip. I can't, Abbott. What do you mean you can't change your slip? I'm not wearing any. Oh. Oh, pardon me. Where do I find Lou Costello? That ain't oh, me. That's me. <laughs> pardon me. Where do I find Lou Costello? Here I am, over by the pickle barrel. Well, raise your hand so I'll know which one is you. <laughs> hey, Abbott, who is this fresh dame? Costello. Don't you recognize her? Lynn Barry. <laughs> Gee, Miss Barry, how did you ever know, and how did you ever find me in this butcher shop? Where else would I look for a fat meatball? <laughs> here, Costello. I'm supposed to do a play on your program tonight. Where do you expect to put it on? In this butcher shop? And why not? Lots of plays were done about butcher shops. Did you ever hear of Hamlet? The Merchant of Venison? <laughs> Did you ever hear of Abe's Irish Roast? Ah, oh, come on. That's ridiculous. Oh, yeah? Ridiculous, huh? How about the story about a hog? Pygmalion. Oh, that's crazy. Crazy, huh? They even wrote a great picture about cows. What picture? Guadalcanal Dairy. <laughs> Boy, did I milk that one. Come to think of it, how about your last picture, Hit the Eyes? There was no meat in that one. I don't know. I saw two hands in it. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Lynn. Don't pay any attention to Costello. He isn't very B-R-I-G-H-T. Yes, he does appear to be rather S-T-U-P-I-D. I heard that. What do you think I am, a D-O-P-P? <laughs> Listen, Mr. Abbott, what about this play? Well, Lynn, it's an original play, and Costello will be your leading man. Costello? He could never play that part. Why not? My leading man must be able to brush me into his arms... Sweep me off his, uh, off my feet and carry me away. You don't want a leading man. You want a street cleaner. <laughs> Costello, that's no way to talk to our guest. Can't oh. you be nice? Yes. Miss Barry, if you'll do this play with me in the butcher shop, I'll take you out after the broadcast. We'll go for a drive. But, Lou, there's no more pleasure driving. Yeah, but there's still pleasure parking. Ah. <laughs> Who wants to park at a coop with a droop? Your technique is all wrong, Costello. Is if you want so? to take out a beautiful girl like Lynn Barry, the first thing to do is hire a limousine and chauffeur. A Rolls Royce, of course. Then you buy me flowers. Orchids, naturally. Then cocktails at the Windsor House. Dinner at Romanoff. With caviar. And champagne. Then tickets for the theater. First row. After that, you make the rounds of the nightclub. Winding up at the Trocadero. Uh, then you get into your limousine again and drive down Stop Wilshire Boulevard. Stop the car! Stop the car! What for? I want to stop at the finance company and make a loan. Uh, Johnny Haynes sings the lovely ballad, My Ideal. around the corner waiting for me Will I wreck 
Camel cigarettes do have more flavor, and if you've ever tried one, I think you'll say, yes, I know. And yet, you may not be a steady camel smoker. Well, here's the difference between trying just one or two camel cigarettes and trying a couple of packs. Camel's extra flavor, the result of expert blending of costlier tobaccos, is what helps them to hold up, keep from going flat, no matter how many you smoke. Give your second pack of camel cigarettes a real test in your t zone your taste and throat. You'll find out about flavor, and I think your throat will give you the last word on camel's smooth, extra mildness, too. And remember, your camels will stay fresh, cool smoking, and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camel cigarettes. They're first in the service. They've got what it takes. <laughs> Well, Costello, we're all ready to do your play. What's it all about? Oh, it's a great story, Abbott. It's about Buffalo Bill and the Wild West. Can you play a Western gal, Miss Barry? Can I play a Western gal? Why, where I come from, they all call me Tex. Where you all come from, Tex? Oklahoma. <laughs> Just a second, Costello. Since when are you a Western character? Are you kidding, partner? What used to call me Six-Gun Costello? But I had to change it to Two-Gun. Why? Of course, with six guns, every time I took a step, my pants fell down. Yuck, 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 yuck. That's another character for you. Well, six gun, I'll agree to play the part. Sounds fun, squaw to me. What's the tip? I said it sounds fun, squaw. Oh, fun, squaw. I used to hunt bar down there every year. Yo. All right, look, I don't believe... I don't believe all this, Costello. Oh, yo! Ah, oh, no, 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 no. You don't know anything about the West. Oh, no. I was raised on a dud ranch. You mean a dude ranch? I said dud. No women. <laughs> Must have been near no gals, Arizona. Har, har. Har and squad. Uh, Lou, this is ridiculous. Must be a couple of Southern all right, cowboys. No, no, Go ahead, Ken. Set the scene. Go ahead. Oh. And now. <laughs> Somebody better set the scene. And now, our play of the evening, a saga of the adventurous West, The Life of Buffalo Bill, brought to you direct from Meyer's Butcher Shop and starring the Abbott and Costello Pickled Pigs Feet Players. (laughs) And as an extra special attraction, Meyer has goose liver at 10 cents a pound. As the scene opens, Buffalo Bill Costello and Buckskin Abbott are on the trail. Suddenly, a shot rings out. Hello? This is Meyer on the wire. Hello there, Meyer. This is Buffalo. What have I got in my store? Talking Buffalo? <laughs> no, no, Meyer. This is Buffalo. I'm, I'm talking from Indian Heights. Please give him my butcher shop in Boyle Heights. <laughs> now, Meyer, will you stop bothering me? i got to go out and kill some Indians. What's the matter? Are we running out of meat? <laughs> oh, never mind that. What's new with Sophie? Well, it's still a very slow process. <laughs> Look, I can't talk to you now, Meyer. Call me back. This is the craziest play I ever heard. When do I come in? In just a second, Lynn. Costello and I are still on the trail approaching the camp of your father. 
Uh, read your line, Costello. Oh, yeah. Buckskin, bud. It's getting dark, and we're going to run into a heap of trouble. Yes, Buffalo. If we don't reach the stockade by sundown, the Indians will massacre us in the dark. They'll scalp us alive. Well, what are you going to do? we got to get word through to Gene Autry. Uh, uh, Gene Autry? <laughs> Buffalo, look. Here comes an Indian chief. He's going to speak to us. How? Oh. Pula, oh. gala, pala, mula. How? Mila, pula, gunda, munda, malabala. Uh, Costello, I didn't know you spoke Indian. I don't. Something went wrong with my typewriter. Uh. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Me welcome you. Me, Chief Flatfoot. Who gave you that name? Great white father? No, great white draft boy. Uh, <laughs> Chief Flatfoot, I come to marry your daughter, Moon Eyes. The one over there. Moon Eyes could not come. I am her sister, Cross Eyes. <laughs> Me glad to meet you. Greetings, white fish. Not fish, face. <laughs> Greetings, fish face. <laughs> I don't think she... I don't think she likes you, uh, Buffalo. Now, let me handle this. Look here, Cross Eyes. I want to marry you. Now, what do you say, gal? No marry you. Me marry the bicarbonate kid. The bicarbonate, the bicarbonate kid. kid? Yes. Wild Bill Hiccup. <laughs> I used to know him as Hopalong Acidity. <laughs> then everything is settled. White man, you go. What's that? I've been an Indian scout for nigh on to 20 years. And you're the most despicable, obnoxious, incorrigible renegade that I've ever encountered. Them's hard words, Buffalo. Hard words? You're right. But I said them. <laughs> Buffalo Bill, you be careful what you say to my father. He's strong in the... I seat. smell him. Yes, no. <laughs> He's strong. Me not wear shoes. Me not wear clothes. Me sleep in wind, rain, and snow. No roof. Me eat raw corn, raw meat, raw fish. You do all that? Yes, and I'm sick and tired of the whole thing. <laughs> oh, boy, what a play. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> well, Indian girl, I want you to marry me. It's no use. You cannot marry me unless you get my mother's consent. I've taken care of that, Cross Eyes. I married your mother... So now I'm your father. So listen, daughter. You have my consent to marry me as soon as I can get a divorce from your old lady, your mother. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Buffalo. The Indians are going to attack us. Me afraid, Buffalo. Don't worry, Cross Eyes. Get behind me. If you hear a shot, get in front of me. Look out. Here they come. Run for your lives. <laughs> Play. Costello, Abbott, Miss Barry, I want to thank you sincerely for watching my butcher shop while my wife Sophie is having a crisis. Gee, Meyer, well, tell me, what, what happened? You, 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 such a day. Girls with white uniforms are rushing in and out. I'm walking up and down. I'm biting my nails. I couldn't eat nothing. But everything turned out wonderful. Sophie is resting up. We am so excited. Gosh, what a lucky fellow. Congratulations, Meyer. Yeah, what was it, a boy or a girl? the most beautiful permanent wave you ever saw. Abbott and Costello will be back in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight we salute Liberty Ship Captain Henry A. Fritz of Detroit, Michigan, whose freighter was docked between two Allied vessels at a North African port. During an air raid, both the adjoining vessels began to burn and explode, tearing huge holes in the American ship's hull. Captain Fritz ordered his men to abandon ship, but went himself to the bow, and though seared by flames, chopped the bow lines and enabled the ship to be moved to safety. In your honor, Captain Henry Fritz, the makers of camels are sending to much of marine men on the high seas 300,000 camel cigarettes. <laughs> Each of the four camel shows honors a Yank of the Week, sends 300,000 camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million camels sent free each week. In this country, the traveling camel caravans have thanked audiences of more than three and a half million Yanks with free shows and free camels.
Camel broadcasts go out to the United States four times a week, a short wave to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Jimmy Durante and Gary Moore, Saturday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks, Monday to Blondie, and next Thursday to Abbott and Costello with their guest, Mr. Edward Arnold. And here's a special message to all young men of 17. Listen to this. Right now, you can join the Army, Navy, or Marine Corps Aviation Enlisted Reserve. If you want to be an Army flyer, join the reserve now and continue your school or job until you're 18. And then you'll start training to become a pilot, navigator, or bombardier. Talk to your parents about this. You must have their permission. You can receive full information and printed literature by writing or visiting your nearest Army Aviation Cadet Examining Board or Naval Office of Procurement. Any Army, Navy, or Marine recruiting station will tell you how to find it. Abbott and Costello with the final word. Thanks, Ken. Well, Lynn Barry, thanks for being our guest tonight. Just a minute, bud. Look, Costello, I want to know how that play ended before Meyer came in. Oh, it was a terrific finish. I'm standing on a hill, all alone. 10,000 blood-curdling Indians are coming at me. How many? 1,000 screaming redskins. How many? 50 ferocious savages. How many? So I killed the old squaw. Fire and squaw! Let me out of here. Let us all out of here. Good night, folks. Good night, night, neighbors. Good night to everybody in Patterson, New Jersey. Good night, Uncle Marty. Tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show with our guest, Edward Arnold. And remember, camels for Christmas. Yes, camel cigarettes make a wonderful gift. Wherever you send them, you can be sure that they'll be fresh when they arrive. Because camels are packed to go around the world. This is Ken Niles wishing you all a very pleasant good night from Hollywood. More pipes smoke Prince Albert than any other tobacco in the whole world. Remember that if you're looking for just the thing to give that pipe smoker for Christmas. Prince Albert comes in special Christmas-wrapped pound or half-pound containers. Get a Christmas-wrapped pound or half-pound container of...